We're almost done. We've just got one more thing to do, and that's to add in a new endpoint that allows us to delete individual games from our list. In order to do this, we're going to make use of everything that we've learned so far. I'm going to start by creating a delete game request test file and also the implementation file. As we'll see, both the test and the implementation are going to be very similar to the existing add game request. So where possible, we're going to use some of TypeScript's more object oriented principles and abstract some of this code out to reduce duplication. In an earlier video, we created the add game request class. And if I were to take a copy paste of that and pop it into my delete game request, well, this would work, but we've got a heck of a lot of duplication going on there. A better approach to this problem, in my opinion, would be to take the existing implementation from our add game request and extract all of that out into a central file, which both of our add game request and delete game requests could then extend from. In other words, those files are going to make use of this common code. If you're unsure about the concept of an abstract class, then think about it as a class that can't be instantiated. So previously we might have done something like const game request equals new add game request. And in this case, we can't do a const game request equals new game request. In other words, you cannot call new on an abstract class, which then raises the question of, okay, well, how do I actually use this code? Well, in order to use the methods that are defined inside an abstract class, we need to provide a more concrete implementation of this class. And the way that we do that is to extend the abstract class. In our case, that gives us both the add game request and the delete game request classes, which we can instantiate. And both of those are going to share all the properties. And if we had any methods defined inside the abstract game request, we could get access to all of them. So whilst we've got quite a lot of code reuse going on inside our implementations, I'm not entirely sure how to do this from a perspective of testing. We've got our add game request test, and because the property is exactly the same for our delete game request, the test is going to be exactly the same too. So we're going to end up by duplicating the entire test here and doing a find and replace on add game versus delete game. And this is fine because I want a test here, but at the same time, I feel a little bit dirty, honestly, that I've ended up duplicating all this stuff. Now, from my point of view, this is probably more of a problem during tutorial settings, honestly, as in real world implementations, it's not often, or I can't think of many times that I've had quite this simple of objects to work with. So typically the tests would diverge somehow or in some way. At this point, if we filter down to just run our request tests, we should see two passing test suites one for our add game request and one for the delete game request. And we can see that the coverage is also covering game request in full. Now with what I would consider the unit testing portion of this tutorial out of the way, I'm going to move on to integration testing, even though we're still using Jest. So I'm going to jump into our code review videos endpoint test file. And the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new block to describe what we've already got. And I'm going to call that the post testing. So essentially this is testing the post functionality, or in other words, when we're sending a post request. And I also want to describe a new set of tests, which is to test the delete functionality. In other words, when we send in a delete request. To save you from watching me tediously type out quite a lot of stuff, I'm going to paste in the tests that we're going to need and you can find all of this in the show notes. Now this test covers what happens when we have an existing game in our list, we delete that game and we should have an empty list. And in order to do that, I've had to create an implementation for our mock remove method. If we consider everything before line 136 to be the setup of our test, then everything from line 139 onwards is the actual expectations and outcomes. On line 139, we start the delete request to our server. So we're still hitting the code review videos endpoint, but we're changing the HTTP verb that we're using from get or post to be delete. And we're sending in some JSON, which contains a key value of name and then whatever game name we want to delete. So we should expect to get back a response with the status code of 204 to say that our game was deleted. That should be of type application JSON. So on line 145, we're making the assertion that we're going to get back a response body and that response body is going to contain some JSON that's got a key of games and inside that should be an array containing our game name. Now that is incorrect we should not expect to get back a array containing our game name. We should expect to get back an empty array. So that's good because what that's going to do is it's going to show 
that our implementation works as long as this test fails. So something that I like to do, honestly, is it, sometimes when you're working through tests, you create them and you've got this happy path and I like to see them fail. So I like to make sure that in some regard, I've got a failing test and then I can make things work and I can be happy that the test failed and I saw it fail. And it's quite a nice little habit to get into because if you only ever see the test pass, it's like you've only got some confidence. It sounds really strange that you only ever want to see your system work, but at the same time, you do want to see it blow up occasionally so that you know you're on the right path. And then finally, we've got some expectations down the bottom that say, we do expect mock get to be called and I'll get onto that in a sec. We do expect mock remove to be called. That's kind of obvious. And mock add should not have been called again. That's kind of obvious. But the reason why mock get should be called is because the, the last thing that we return is a call to get our existing list of games. So we should expect to get back whatever's in that list. But in order to do that, we must have called the Redis get or whatever storage implementations get method. Okay, so let's run this test now. So I'm going to jump across to Jest. I'm going to filter this down to only run the code review videos tests. And that's running a little bit slowly as well because it's running all the other tests that we've got. So I'm going to switch back to our test file and add the dot only to only run this particular test. And with that done, I'm going to open up our code review videos roots file. And the reason that we're getting back a 404 is pretty straightforward. We don't actually have a method that handles delete requests. So again, in order to save you from watching me type out a lot of stuff, I'm going to paste in the implementation. And again, you can find this in the show notes. Now we've got a couple of little things to tidy up when we paste this in. The first is that we don't have the import for our delete game request. Pretty straightforward. The IDE should be able to help you out here. And also we're not awaiting the outcome of a store.remove. Both of those are fairly trivial fixes and they get us to a point where we can run the test and we're no longer getting that 404. We're now instead getting a 200. Now here's where things get interesting with these resty and I want to put that in inverted commas. This isn't true REST, but this is what most people refer to as REST. I would just call this a JSON API. And there's no defined standard really on what HTTP response codes that you're definitely supposed to return. This is in contrast to something like GraphQL, but that's a different uh, subject matter entirely. But the, the strange thing about APIs is you can hit one API and delete a, a resource and you'll get back a 200. You can hit another and you'll get back a 204. And it entirely depends on the person who implemented it and their, their set of preferences, really. So as long as each endpoint follows the same standard, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, it's, it's a very strange one. And I deliberately left in this in the show notes as well, just to sort of imply that when you copy paste this code from uh, from the, the show notes that you would sometimes if you copy paste in stuff from the internet you're going to end up with slightly different outcomes and no one's wrong that's what's so strange about like i say rest in inverted commas uh, sorry going off on a bit of a tangent there there's one further test that I'm going to add in, and that's to check that when we delete a game from a list that's got multiple games in, that we don't end up deleting every game in the list or, or something unusual like that. There's only really one point that we're going to cover because this is almost entirely the same as the previous test. And that's that our expectation of the response body should contain a key of games still, but the array should be the list of games with whichever game we deleted filtered out. Now, the reason that can work directly as a one liner is because a filter is going to return an array. So there we have it. At this point, we have all our tests passing. And if you were to send in a real request, make sure to start up your Redis Docker container or however you're using Redis first. But you should be able to see that Redis gets populated. And if you delete again, then that gets removed from Redis as well. Now, there's tons of improvements that we could do here. And you are completely free to modify this however you see fit. So hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and if there's any questions or comments or other things that you'd like to see, then please do leave a comment below and thank you very much for watching.